So it's another morning, it's another week, and I'm here with my friends, Gary, who's binary, Gary on the internet, and Allison, who's Allison Plus on the internet. This is a show where uh, Allison brings us a topic, and Gary and I try to figure out what it is without knowing what it is. Um, it's like, kind of like Balderdash, except real things that we really don't know. Our day jobs. <laughs> I don't know. I'll Google it. No Google allowed though in this instance. Yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> How's all right? I well. myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a it's a week. <sighs> wow. I could make the, a podcast entirely of deep size. Deep, <sighs> deep size. <laughs> with Allison Tuck. Have either of you ever done laughter yoga? Laughter yoga, no. I've not. That should be that should have been a topic. What are you doing? <laughs> well, no, but it seems a bit like I know what it is already, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> By the virtue of the two words combined, I okay, clear. okay. So, so what instead, instead of that being like a topic, topic, it would be like a quiz, like name the positions in laughter yoga. So mm-hmm. we have like instead of downward dog, there'd be like, I don't know. Stupid puppy. Stupid, what's stupid, stupid puppy? puppy? It's the same as downward dog, except you say stupid puppy and everybody laughs. <laughs> um, hold on, let me review some notes from last week. Uh, you have notes about stupid puppy. I have, well, no, I'm actually just scrolling back in the uh chat log on uh, uh, Slack. Uh, stench cow would obviously be the position, yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's why I need to scroll back because I was like, stink cow. <laughs> no stink bull no that's not it i just i couldn't get there yeah i do still stink have marsupial i do still have two of those <laughs> left <laughs> okay you quizzes yeah yes i have i have two two that we didn't do <sighs> But it's, that's not going to last the whole the whole show, unfortunately. I brought a topic. Okay. Good. <laughs> I'm not slacking over here. I had a topic last week. A topic last. Yeah. No. I I expect. <laughs> I have a whole the list record. because I'm so panicked. I'm going to run out of things. For the record, we had a topic last week, and Chris was not willing to engage. So we it's true. It. It's true. Really? I, no. That's Did I even exactly how it happened. No, I didn't even no. say what it was. Okay. Nope. We got a so television. Same one. <laughs> all right. Wouldn't it be funny if you're like, wait, yeah, you did say that. We all just forgot. I can hijack it again. <laughs> no, I don't. Wouldn't even, Let's get I wouldn't even be surprised if I brought this a- to the Allison table. Will, Allison will appreciate this. This oh, is a thing I got. Hero. That's a this, fun one. This is a thing I got in my uh, my stocking that I haven't shown y'all. But that's, that's, perfect. that's topical because, uh, because Juniper was on the show before we started recording. Yeah. Juniper is a cat, for those of you that are not uh, taking the video. Version not familiar with all of our loved ones and family members. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's also a plant. Juniper is our. Uh, but to go back to laughter yoga, um, if you ever get the chance, it can be a lot of fun, um, particularly if you're with a, like a little pod of people that you know. Um, I was lucky enough to go with Danette, who. Um, oh, a fan has, of the show fan of the show, (laughs) fan of the pod, (laughs) um, (laughs) who has an amazing laugh. um, And it's the kind of laugh that just makes you laugh. Um, So it's just contagious. And so we just, it was, laughter yoga was like a piece of cake. And then you leave and like your body has somehow worked through all this tenseness. Mm -hmm. This was like several years ago, by the way, for everyone who's like- It wasn't just like last week. How dare you get together and laugh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and you also like get rid of a lot of phlegm. So that oh. from all the laughter. 
you like yeah. start it's almost like a cough like your body's just like too much anyway interesting <laughs> so that's topic not is deflammification uh, yeah that's not a that's not a output that i would have expected like um but like the topic the actual horror, topic is yes but 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 getting rid of phlegm is not something i would have expected the topic this week is stern mutation it's a what now s t e r n u t a t i o n stern mutation i need to go to my binary jazz section of tabs wow you sound so organized yeah i have i, I know have i was a, like wow we take up a whole section <laughs> well i mean it's because my i'm like i need to log in the website oh god I oh. it's because my tab uh stuff Chris? is out of control okay you were moving in slow-mo there for a minute it's because it's because my tabs are out of control so i have a i have a a, a firefox add-on that um splits my tab my ridiculous number of tabs into groups of tabs so i have a binary jazz group and i have a D, &D group and i have a whatever other stuff group and i have like a kid's yes, we hate group. it gary we're a group yeah we occupy chris's brain when we're not actually even doing anything I'm oh he just... thinks about us when he triggers to click on something else every day <laughs> <laughs> or at least acknowledges we exist um I need a plugin for, or a app or uh, extension or whatever it's called for a browser that says, hey man, you type this URL in every single day. Perhaps you should bookmark it. Um, I believe that's called a pinned tab. I think you just pin the tab and then you don't need to worry about it because it's always there. <laughs> but, well, I don't, I have, I mean, I have dozens of them. I don't want them all pinned. I mean, because I'm the guy that like, oh, I have 10 tabs open. We're, we're declaring tab bankruptcy and closing this browser. I then in that it case, it has to be pertinent to what I'm using, or I move along. So I have bookmarks for all these like mid-level things. So like maybe I'll really need to refer to this again. But then there's all these things that I type in constantly, and I also have autocomplete turned off except for items that are bookmarked. So yeah, so there lies my problem. So Seems like counterproductive. Yeah, I start to type in like my local crux. URL, and I'm like, oh man, I've typed this whole thing. Perhaps I should book. I'm done typing. Enter, and I don't bookmark it. Like I, my computer should be like, "Hey, you type this every morning. Just bookmark it, you lazy bum." I'm I'm here for some tough love. This is on you, not the robots. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is a thing that you can do uh, on <laughs> Firefox, and I think you can do it on Chrome as well. Maybe not Chrome, um, but like the new tab page has like. Uh, a place to put things that you visit frequently or like it like your most frequently visited sites oh. sort of to the top and then you can pin yeah. things to that so if it's something like that's in that sort of collection of types of things then you can do that um but so i actually don't when i close the browser it clears history and everything it would still so i don't have like recently visited things when i open up because it's basically the browser's it's, like hi yeah. nice to meet you that's <laughs> Um, I mean, that's a choice. <laughs> yeah, that's also a choice. Yeah, but but well, you can you can there, pin you can pin specific things, and when you pin things, it's basically um, it's a bookmark. Yeah. All right. So the reason I do it. Oh, sorry. Well, uh, yeah, back to the topic. I apparently I'm the one that's going to derail it. Yeah. Well, no, uh, but I mean, the stern mutation of it all is that the onus is on you, not the robots. Stern mutation. S T E R N U. But T A T I O N. Is that but then make the bookmark experience better. Like if I go to bookmark something, I hit whatever the bookmark command is. I think it's command D. I don't know. I, I, it, my fingers just do it and it pops up this window. But I want to put it in this folder over here. Like that navigation process. But if a, all you care about that, I'll just type it in. If all you care about is the auto completion, it doesn't matter where it goes. Does it really? Oh, damn, you're right. No, it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> So that's yeah. actually all the right you care about. I just need one. Just bookmark it. It doesn't matter. All the stuff. I need a bookmark folder more. that everything goes to called Gary's Dumb Bookmarks. And then when I autocomplete, I start typing in yeah. whatever, and it's just there. Yeah, you're the stuff. You're, the stuff you care about besides that can go in folders, and that can be organized. But all the stupid things that you type in, like over and over, it doesn't matter. Well, no, like I don't. I mean. 
the stuff that I bookmarked, it's mid-level. Like I'm really good at deleting that after I've consumed it. But it's the things I use most of the time. You're like I'm constantly going to, ah, Google Cloud Console, right? Like I go there several times a week, maybe. I don't know. I go there fairly regularly. Enough that like typing all of that in doesn't make sense. My computer should be like, yo, here's the URL. But because there's no history for it, I can't. It sounds like you set yourself up for like this paranoid loop that doesn't serve you. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's which I more. appreciate as someone who lives with someone who wears a tinfoil hat often. I like dig that vibe, but like, it doesn't seem like it's actually working for you. Maybe the answer is like, get rid of all bookmarks. I just haven't gone far enough. No, I feel like that's not the answer. <laughs> like bookmarks will be like a text file on my desktop that I open up. <laughs> It sounds like there's like- No, maybe- it won't even be. It'll be a text on my desktop that I grab from the command line and then pass the URL to the browser when I need it to open like it. Maybe you just need to bookmark <laughs> three or four things to solve this problem. Yeah, honestly, I can't believe we've gotten this far down on this silly conversation for me to just bookmark <laughs> three things. And I've forgotten right. topic again. Can Stern, we repeat one more time? Stern mutation. Stern mutation. S-T-E-R-N yeah. or- U- well, E-A-T-I-O-N. Tation means uh, calculation. So U-T-A-T-I-O-N. like a computation is a computer. U-T-A-T-I-O-N. So stern mutation yeah. is when yeah. you use um, like an array of sterno containers <laughs> and light and unlight them to create the binary representation of the data you need to process. I don't know what that means. The, I feel like I know words in those sentences. Yeah. <laughs> Not in that combination. So sternos, like the little cans of the gel you light on fire to keep things warm at buffets. Okay. I had no idea that's what those were called. Yeah. That that's, that's, that's a sterno. A, that's a food service industry person, uh, food food appliance. Yeah. Person. Well known for my work in the food service industry. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> um, well known for consuming the food in the food service industry. Well, I mean, I guess that's fair. Like, can you imagine me walking through like a buffet? Like, I wonder how they keep this warm and like looking underneath, like <laughs> taking pictures of it with my phone so I can identify it later on. Yeah, that's that does not sound unlike me. So um, perhaps well, you were onto something. Mutation is similar to mutation, just missing one letter. So stern mutation oh. is uh, is when. Um, when somebody is very uh, sort of strict uh, and uh, and happens to the best of us, and she brought me a puff ball. Uh, <laughs> someone is very strict and uh, then mutates into some uh, horrible beast or monster. Okay, it's so ba- basically, it describes um, my Catholic school nuns. Oh. Um, I think I think we can agree that my my basis of the idea of calculation was wrong. Um, but I also think that there is something there, and that something is that. Uh, no, there's nothing there, nothing at all. No, because the first half was all BS. So whatever. Um, but I think you're right. It has more to do with change than calculation. Change makes more sense. So stern mutation. What's the sterny stern mutation? Is that it? Stern. Stern. Stern mutation. Howard, stern. Howard stern mutation. Yeah. Yeah. Like becoming a bloviating jerk. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's okay. what it is. <laughs> Sorry, that was the worst. That was the worst episode of Binary Jazz because I agreed with you. I was like, what's happening? Does it work if I agree with you? No, Gary, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how can how can we do yes and if yes and doesn't work for our show it just doesn't what what is this yes yes because I, I didn't do and i just did yes okay yes and yes uh, <laughs> also <laughs> uh, also furthermore uh, part part of uh stern mutation is uh your voice becomes uh suddenly very uh radio friendly and uh, you make lots of uh, sex jokes. 
for no apparent reason, like nothing relevant to the content of the show or, or content of the conversation. You just randomly insert sex jokes into everything. What, uh, I think we can set aside Howard Stern. Can we though? <laughs> I, I just don't think that he is important enough to have this topic named after him. How do you like that? How do you like that? That was a move that positioned us as more important than Howard Stern. I don't know. There, okay, okay. Caught that or not. So that was yeah. there we go. It's pretty All clever. Right. Power um, move. Yeah. What you Howard who? <laughs> uh, yeah, I so the Stern the Stern care. Well no, the Stern prefix. The Stern prefix. is part of a ship. Oh damn, you're right. So is sternutation just like it's turning Steering a ship. A ship? You're sternutating. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The sailing side of me is emerging. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to like put like a little sailor cap on and be like, ta-da! I mean, what you don't All know right. about Ellison is that she's actually a pirate. A huge like an sailing actual, an actual sea pirate. <laughs> May not know, but also like, sh- uh, like shock value, like really low. Not surprising. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's a pirate. Oh. I'm gonna well, show up wearing some. I have I have a pirate hat. I have a sailor hat. I should have come more ready for this. It's true. And a parrot. <laughs> Just a really quiet parrot. Um. So so I mean that that feels like it's a pretty good guess, Chris. Sternutation is like. What else do you know ship. about boats? Anything? We have. <laughs> I mean, I, let's I, start with I, the basics. Floating. <laughs> Do you know which side is the left and which side is the right? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> port, port not all starboard. at once. <laughs> port, port and starboard. Uh, port is um, left and starboard is right. Okay. Because left has four letters and port has four letters. They both. I have knew you were going to say that. Way. Remember it. But I had to think about it and I had to count the letters in my head. Because. <laughs> I'm not Rain Man or something. I don't know. Um, port fore and aft is front uh, the, and back. There's a, there's a mast. Poop deck is the is the one below the main deck. It's the lower deck, I think, towards the front, maybe towards the back. You know, uh, I know nothing about boats, right? So when I'm nodding, I'm really like. <laughs> um, I was hoping that was confirmation that I was right about poop deck. I mean, the I bosun, does that count? <laughs> the bosun is sort of in charge of sort of sort of like like next rank down from like the first mate is sort of in charge of all the things, um, and the quartermaster is uh, actually no, the bosun is uh, also sort of in star- charge of like carpentry. Um, and the quartermaster, the quartermaster is the one that's sort of like down from the first mate. It sort of like gives all the orders and stuff. Um, quartermaster in charge of supplies. That too, sure. Yeah. Um, um, the I'm, keel. I'm basing it entirely off of what I know. The in middle, the, uh, right down the Dungeons and Dragons. You want a true keel line right down the middle. That's true. Even keel. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, my grandfather had a sailboat and I spent, like, I didn't spend, like, I can't say, like, oh, I spent summer sailing. No, like, I, several times I went out on it. Um, and, uh, and actually, one time, here's a fun story. Sure, why not? Uh, he had, like, so when he was, you know, when my dad was, you know, teen, maybe preteen, um, four, four boys in that family, they built, like, a small sailboat together in the garage over the course of, like, I guess a year, a couple of years, that was like their family project or something. And then they went and raced in boat in races with it. Um, it. I mean, nothing, nothing super exciting, but then, uh, you know, my grandfather liked it when he was older and retired. He was like, I'm going to buy a boat, sailboat. So he bought a sailboat and uh, nothing enormous, it's like a little sailboat, took it out on big lake near my house, but then also towed it up to Cleveland where he lived. And so I got to go on that sailboat in Lake Erie, but then also, he handled that one while my dad and I got in a little one and we raced on Lake Erie. And when we were attacking at some point, that old boat, like we turned and the mast just went crack <laughs> in the oh. water. We were dead in the water. Yeah. It was, it was great though. It was 
ton of fun. Tacking is when you pull on the ropes to tighten the sail. No. No, tacking is tacking when you cut Tacking is what back. you do when you turn the sail so you go a different <laughs> direction. Yes, because the you are going into the wind, so you tack to go back and forth so the wind will push you. That is a word that I learned <clears throat> from uh, John Flanagan and uh, the – what's the stupid pirate? Norse pirate series. Uh, Stephen the Norse pirate. No, it's the – Something oh. something brotherhood. It's the brother brother Stephen band. Even the brotherhood brother of the band. Norse pirates. Brother band Damn. chronicles or whatever. Okay. You could make up any name and we wouldn't know at this point. Well, you should because it's like the classic young adult literature. Look, Allison's a pirate. She's not going to watch pirate shows or read <laughs> pirate books. I will admit I that, my fashion, that my fashion choices put me maybe one or two accessories away from either pirate or witch depending on <laughs> which direction i go it's a spectrum <laughs> a spectrum between pirate and witch yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm like over here somewhere <laughs> half the closet has pirate accessories half the closet has witch accessories yeah it's basically like what hat do i go with am i wearing <laughs> jaunty pants or jaunty skirt like, yes yeah. these, these are all and like the, the like the gold hoop earrings right like right. they work for either yeah yeah they work for, yep. yeah, i know it's just it's right in the middle of the closet between the accessories my oh, somewhere in my these today. fashion style is white guy i am wearing jeans white, and a gray shirt white programmer probably because i always wear hoodies yeah yeah i joke that this is my uniform yeah, I, I doesn't feel like a joke. It's, actually. it's really, it's really kind of sad how uninventive my wardrobe is. <laughs> Do you want to be more inventive? No. Yeah, so that's like I feel not... like I feel like I, I figured out my thing a long time ago, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. before WordCamp US, I went to a local thrift store and bought like a pretty. I mean, it was a black shirt, but like. For a button-up black shirt, it was kind of loud. It had blue and white stripes and stuff on it. And some new jeans. But it wasn't then, a black button-up shirt then. It was a striped shirt. It was mostly black. <laughs> I don't know. Was that shirt I was wearing when we met Chris? I don't know. Do you remember my uh, shirt? It's possible. I remember yours. Yeah. Do you remember mine? What was mine? No, not at, no, not at okay. all. Not at all. Sorry. <laughs> I thought this cool was like I did. a Rain Man memory moment. Yeah. I don't yeah. remember what shirt I was wearing at WordCamp US. I, I do I do have a vague recollection of you having told me that you went to a thrift store to get what you're basically what you were wearing. And I knew that you were wearing new pants because you didn't have pants because you were in, living in Florida and you don't wear pants in Florida. So you had to have pants for the trip because it was not in Florida. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so to that end, like, like for something like that, like, you know, Pick up your wardrobe, use it, and then go back and take it back to the same thrift store. Mm. It's like renting the clothing, basically. In my case, like I think I spent twelve dollars for the word camp weekend, and was like, "Great, look fantastic." Never gonna wear this stuff again. No sense keeping it in my closet. Let's be honest about it and just put it back in there. Someone else can enjoy it. So, uh, obviously, with COVID, I've not been traveling, so I haven't had to check out the new thrift stores in, uh, in the new the thrift stores in Concord that I've never been to. Yeah. Yeah. Moving during, moving during COVID or moving during quarantine is an interesting thing that I hadn't actually thought a hundred percent through because when you move to a new place, you're figuring out all the, where all the stuff is, but if you can't go to all the stuff, you just like figure out where the gas station is and maybe the grocery store. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We we have a, a Japanese place we do take out from. Um, do you pick it up or do you have it delivered? Pick it up. Pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good excuse to get out of the house and they are uh, I love how getting takeout is an excuse to get out of the house. I mean I, I totally feel this, but like that's the thing. That like I'm getting takeout and it gets me out of the house. Yep. Yep. And, uh, you know, our local parks are, are pretty good. So not very, uh, 
uh, not very populated. And of course, there's no sporting events happening right now. So it's not like there's like, you know, a softball team is using the fields or anything. It's pretty, uh, they're pretty empty. Um, you know, and a fair bit of walking. So I could tell you all about everything that's went within about a mile and a half of my house. Oh, I went to, before Christmas, I went to, um, there's a game store downtown. So I went in there, like board games, um, mm -hmm. which was fun. Uh, I don't know a lot about like the, um, like uh, figure based games that are pretty popular right now. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Uh, you mean like with like the meeples, the wooden meeples, like like basically no, like the ones you like tabletop board game. Okay. No, no, not no, like, like the one the actual game. miniatures that you paint, like Warhammer miniatures. That that's the word. Yeah. Yes, okay. thank you. Yes. Okay, that's a little bit different. That's a, that's also my wheelhouse, but that's a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. I no. I I like war game type it. stuff. Yeah. And actually, they have at that place they have um, chess pieces, uh, and we have this outdoor chess table that's just sitting there. It needs pieces, so I need to. I, always, I need to go back there and get some chess pieces. And my problem here's here's my soapbox. My problem with like my outside understanding of games like Warhammer, where it's all about like ah yes, miniatures, that was where I saw miniatures for these particular like units, is that it feels to me like you can't play the game without these super expensive miniatures. Like you don't have the unit unless you physically have the unit. You can't play the game with like a marker and that might be an oversimpli that might be totally misguided but that is my impression from an outside is that you can't you don't even you don't actually have the thing until you have the thing and that is there is, not like a base set that you start with and then well, you yeah, yeah i think i think or? there is and there's like various like collections of things but like because they're miniatures and they're high quality whatever it's fucking expensive and like it's yeah. so prohibitively like, prohibitively awesome. expensive and like capitalist that it just like as if Dungeons and Dragons and it's with its millions of freaking books and miniatures and accessories for that, that I'm spending money in and pumping money into the Wizards of the Coast yeah. uh, uh, machine, you know, constantly. No, no, I that's any better. Like, like I'm really one to talk, but still, it's really prohibitively expensive to get into that that hobby. I'm picking up what you're putting down here. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Hmm. I've been 3D printing tons of D and D stuff uh, this last couple of weeks. Um, because I'm sort of prepping so that everybody's like out of town. <laughs> mm, yeah. Your family's gonna come back and be like, I have like a small army of pieces. <laughs> I I I've been printing stuff to to get ready because we're starting a new campaign. And so I've been printing stuff that they might encounter in the next in the next couple of weeks. And so I have this bag of things that I've printed. So I've got I've got I haven't had a chance to like show these off to anybody other than like Instagram. <laughs> Um, so I've got this ogre. Uh, wow, that's pretty ogre. good quality. Yeah. Uh huh. And I've got uh, a brown bear. What um, what three D printer do you? Use? I have an Ender Five, um, which was uh, not the cheapest, but not the most expensive, and uh, but probably on the on the more on the lower lower more consumer end but i also have a friend um who also has a 3d printer and he has an ender something else which is sort of like the more commercial version of what i have but what i have is like one step above like the entry level because the entry level is the ender three and so mine's a little bit bigger um i have a tiny 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 little fox <laughs> uh i have a whole bunch of these wolves <clears throat> And then I have a couple. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I needed I needed one d six plus one, so I printed seven. Uh, and then I have a uh, this is a winter wolf, and I have two of these. And then this is what happens when Chris gets left to his own devices. It totally is. <laughs> and then I've got uh, a frost giant, a male frost oh, wow. giant, and then I have. A female frost giant because they're a couple, uh, and I have a mammoth, which oh, also had which also has a frost giant that can sit on his back. That's oh, awesome. <laughs> um, and then so the 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 story that we're doing that we're entering into is the rhyme of the frost maiden. Uh, and I might have just uh, frozen. 
Um, so that means that you might not even see these. Um, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally frozen. Uh, I wonder if it's going to record me or if it's going to record the <laughs> so show. Weird. He's frozen. Oh, now he's back. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, I was talking. How have you been? been? I was Good talking, to see you. And I was wondering if it was going to record my side or your side. And uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. So I guess we'll, the show will, will tell us. Um, the, 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 the thing that we're entering into is Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. And so the Frost Maiden herself can take three different forms. So I've printed two of the three forms. Um, this is the third first... we printed today, or no, the third I haven't printed yet. The third I'm hoping not to print. <laughs> so, so she's it's it's sort of it, the the concept behind the three different forms is sort of similar to the pagan like maiden mother and crone thing, except it's sort of like flipped. So the first one is this sort of. Uh, well, now I'm frozen again. Um, the first one I actually painted. Um, it's this weird sort of like owl, horned owl with like cloven feet, like person who's like reclusive. And then she turns into the brittle maiden, uh, which is she's like, like has ice all over her and she's like makes weapons out of ice and she's like, she's like 10 feet tall. And the third form is known as the winter's womb. So instead of maiden, mother, and crone, it's like maiden, mother, and sex, like sex organ, like, <laughs> which is the reason why I don't really want to print the last one because I'm kind of hoping that I can just ignore that it exists and like right. pretend that it's not a thing because that's a really weird progression. And obviously the womb is the most powerful form of this, of this creature, which is also kind of weird um it's a weird, it's a weird superpower <laughs> yeah it's kind of weird that it, that you go and it's sort of like and it kind of goes from like crone to maiden to like womb uh yeah, i don't that, know how i feel about that yeah but i'm not a huge fan of like maiden mother crone anyway for reasons that, that yeah i mean that's fair um i would at least like it to be you know that though <laughs> then, then you're like that's preferable over then maiden mother and womb uh so that's that's what i've been doing that's yeah and i printed an i printed a new one of these guys uh today um or last night and it looked like how it. long does it take to print one um something like this uh takes this guy took like nine ten hours um yeah something like the little tiny little fox that took like maybe a half hour um and then you know everything in between um so like like the the bear took like a couple hours like three or four um but but yeah the bigger things uh bigger things take longer and the the, the tricky thing is is like getting the supports for um getting the supports right for all the like things that are like kind of like you know the like her arm is sticking out and so there needs to be supports underneath it because it can't just print out in space and it like magically work but i feel like i feel like i've gotten pretty good at it uh since i've printed a whole bunch of things like some of these things i printed just in a one shot like a lot of times when we were starting out like it took several attempts to get something to look right and we had to do lots of tweaks in between i feel like um like a lot of these are just like one shot, like here it is, I'm printing the thing and then and then go. And so um, that's admirable because it does seem like something. I took a 3D printing class at the library and I was just like, oh, this would take a bit to get the hang of. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. So the other thing that I've that I've learned is the particular filament. So I got a filament um, a while ago um, thinking that it was there's different types of filaments and they're like basically different types of plastic. Um, and I got this thing that I accidentally thought was the other thing um and so we just used it because we had it and it's um abs instead of pla and i don't know what the acronyms are for exactly um, but pla is like what like your plumbing is made out of you have modern plumbing it's pla plastic um so abs is uh basically uh more brittle um which means it can kind of like it doesn't it it, it means it's sort of like somewhat stronger but also breaks easier um, which makes it really tricky with the supports and stuff. And also when you're like taking the supports off because the thing can break, but it, what it does is it cools a lot faster. 
Um, so I think it comes out a little bit smoother. Um, a lot of times with 3D printed things, you can kind of see the layers. And I think that with the, with the ABS, you see the layers less because it sort of smooths over because it cools really fast. Um, and it also has a very high uh, melting temperature more so than the other thing. So getting the balance of like your bed temperature and your extruder temperature and that sort of thing um, is, is, and is sort of a, a challenge. And so I've, we've, I've been using that kind for a while and, but we decided that that's like really finicky and a pain in the ass and we're gonna go back to the other kind. So I'm, I'm waiting until I'm done with this filament so that I'm gonna have to relearn everything over from scratch because I've totally forgotten how to use the other. I mean, I, obviously it's not gonna be that bad, but, um, but that's, I'm, I'm just waiting for that to happen because I know how to use this now. And then we're gonna be switching back to the other thing and it's gonna be a whole, a whole other thing. Whole recalibration process. Yeah, yeah. A whole sternutation. <laughs> a whole new sternutation. So what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? Yeah. Uh, sternutation is the act of sneezing. <laughs> we were so close. So <laughs> ridiculously close. I mean, I guess that, you Like in the say... sense that we said words. Yeah. We said words. Allison said words. We were close. Um, it does Not have to do with even. change mm -hmm. to, to yeah. a degree. And she to do even with gave us spelling phlegm, which is what I started off with. You gave That's us a, like a really true. solid hint yeah. to start out. <laughs> <sighs> ah, well, here we are. Uh, well, as usual, we have uh, feedback in our inbox, and by feedback, I mean spam. Oh, boo! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Luella Derry would like us to know, or would would like us to know, or ask would like us to would like to ask yeah. us. Are we interested in advertising that costs less than $40 monthly and sends thousands of people who are ready to buy directly to your website? No. Uh, and the answer, Luella, uh, sadly, is no. We are not interested at all. I'm not sad about it. Okay. Well, I mean, we're sad because it's a potential listener that we're just saying no. No, nope, not no, sad no, at all. <laughs> Not gonna use a, lose a lick of sleep over it. Although I don't sleep in licks, so I don't. You don't. Know how that's you don't. Pertinent. You don't sleep in licks. Do I don't mean? measure my sleep in licks. I don't. I'm not sure. What does that mean? Sleep a lick. I didn't I sleep know. a lick last night. I don't know. Like, uh, we've got two minutes. And how I many licks is it normal to I, sleep? I think it's time. <laughs> I've got a very short. I've got a very short game. Uh, it's uh, World Wrestling Entertainment Wrestler, or Dungeons and Dragons Familiar. Okay, ready to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Grung or Mojo Raleigh? Which one is uh, the the wrestler? Grung. Mojo Raleigh's the wrestler. Mojo Raleigh. Okay, you're correct. Uh, Manchun or Fandango? Fandango's the wrestler. Yeah. My source is telling me that Manchun is the wrestler, which is. I, which is interesting because Manchun is actually a wizard in Dungeons and Dragons, not oh, actually <laughs> not actually a familiar. Yeah. Okay. Lou Crada or Lou Albano? Probably pronounced that wrong. Lou Albano. Lou Crada or Lou Albano? Lou Crada is wrestler. No, the other one. Yeah, okay. Lou Albano is the wrestler, the former wrestler, and then he was a manager for a while. Uh, I remember Lou Albano. Yeah. Um, oh, I do not. Anis Hag or Grand Metallic? Grand Metallic is definitely a wrestler. It's like such a. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. You, did, you did well. You did well on this one. <laughs> yeah. That's... The adrenaline helps us just trust our gut instinct. It's true. Yeah, you just like just have to make the snap decisions. I think I think that Allison. I wasn't keeping track, but I think that Allison won that one because she got Lou Albano. I, yes. And you, got, and you said Lou Carrada. Yeah. Well, just like sailing, wrestling is my number two interest. Yes. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.